All right, going into last uh, weekend and going into the weekend, the Washington Stand reported finding over seven, over 40 separate incidents of violent attacks against churches, prayer and pregnancy care centers and other pro-life facilities across the country since May the 2nd when the Supreme Court opinion was leaked. Now, these attacks include arson, vandalism, property theft and property destruction. Well, and then there was another attack in uh, Portland or in uh, Gresham, Oregon, adding to the growing number of attacks this past weekend. Is anything being done? And can anything be done? Well, joining me now to talk about this is Congressman Chris Smith. He is a member of the, uh, he is actually the chairman of the Pro-Life Caucus and a senior member of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs. He represents New Jersey's 4th Congressional District. He joins us by phone. Congressman, welcome back to the program. Tony, thank you very much for having me on. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, th this situation we're seeing right now, where we're seeing this uh, attack uh, on care pregnancy centers, we're seeing churches disrupted, the Homeland Security issuing an alert a week before last, basically saying, yeah, there's a heightened level of awareness because pro-life and uh, groups supporting abortion might take action. Well, they're not doing anything to rein in the left uh, wing violence that's taking place all across this country, uh, unless I'm missing it. Are they doing something? Uh, no, and that is greatly disturbing. The attorney general uh, should be out in front, as should the president of the United States. Yes, we got the abortion president, Joe Biden, uh, at the helm of this country, but he should be saying absolutely no violence against pregnancy care centers, churches, uh, and individuals. And we've seen a huge increase of such violence, as of which I have never seen. And we are, we think, on the verge of a reversal of Roe versus Wade. And frankly, I've been in the movement for 50 years, and I've always believed when we got to the point where that so-called constitutional amendment was about to be eviscerated, uh, that you would see the violence for children uh, directed at the pro-life movement, uh, including pregnancy care centers, churches, uh, and individuals. So I think this is the beginning, not the end. So the administration needs to step up. Uh, I'm working on piece, a piece of legislation, Tony, that would that would not mirror, but be not all that different from the Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances Act, which uh, says that abortion clinics, um, you know, if there's force or threat of force. Um, they are, you know, people are, are held to accountable with enhanced sentencing uh, and fines. We need to do that for the pro-life movement and for churches uh, during this crisis. You know, it's a really good point, uh, Chris. That goes back to the early 1990s, I think 1994, yes, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that that was put into law because there were some blockades of clinics um, right. Actually, a lot less violence than what we're seeing today, but Congress acted and passed the Freedom of Entrance to Clinics Act. And so so why why are we not seeing movement by the federal government here? Why, why not uh, the president speaking out about this? Well, administratively, the president, the attorney general, uh, Department of Homeland Security, which has warned, but somehow they warned and somehow the pro-lifers uh, are at fault as well. And that's not true. I mean, I've been in the movement 50 years. It is committed, this movement, to nonviolence, including nonviolence against unborn children and their mothers by way of abortion. And, and you're right. It, it's a total abrogation of their duty to protect people and property. When you see these wonderful pregnancy care centers getting firebombed and attacked and vandalized, as well as churches and as well as pro-life um, uh, organizations and their headquarters, uh, this is a, a kind of war on the advocates for life. And, you know, we are a nation of rules and laws, uh, and the laws, even without enhancing it with my bill, um, it, it's already against the law. Where Where is the president? Right. A wall right, right now. And that has to change. That has to change. Yeah, and, and again, comparing the two, what we were talking about in the 1990s was the blocking of entrance to these clinics. Here we're talking yeah. about vandalism. We're talking about violent attacks. We're talking about firebombing. We're talking about vandalism completely, I mean, ratcheted up. But yet there's crickets coming from yeah, the Democratic crickets, majority exactly, in yeah. Congress. Uh, anything our words? folks can, yeah. anything well, our they, folks they can, can do you know, to be helpful? Contact the White House, say, speak out. 
you know, be for nonviolence, stop this attack or these threats that are being made against the members of the Supreme Court, including Kavanaugh. Yeah. I mean, what is this? When, when Schumer made that infamous statement over the Supreme Court uh, against Brett Kavanaugh and others, uh, he needs to be held to account. I mean, that sounds like incitement to me. Uh, if right. you go back and watch that clip, it was, it was awful. And so he needs to right. be out in front as well saying nonviolence. Disagree and right. argue without through debate, not through firebombing. Yeah. Uh, Chris Smith, always great to talk with you. Thank you so much for the years of so uh, work that you've done on behalf of the unborn. And, Tony, thank you. You know, FRC has experienced this, too. And you guys, you know, yeah. very bravely fought back. And you even prayed for the guy that's now in prison for 25 years. So what, what an example you set. Well, we're not going away. No white flag is going to be waving outside of our building, no matter what. Uh, folks, uh, good advice. Contact the White House. They have an information line. We'll try to get it up on the website as well. Uh, until next time.